Today, we're going to be talking about short management. Oh, not these kinds of shorts. We're going to be talking about managing short circuits for your digital command control system on your layout on Ron's Trains and Things right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more videos about model railroading tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and hit that little bell icon so you can catch every episode. Over the years since I started using digital command control, I have read countless articles about short protection, about power districts, and about ways to protect your layout from short circuits, as well as ways to keep the rest of your layout running whenever you have a short circuit in just one area. Today, I want to talk about the subject of short management and using short management districts on your layout. My layout has about 100 feet of mainline track in the visible area, and running in-scale locomotives, I find that I really don't need power boosters in addition to my DCC unit to get plenty of power to all of my track. What I do need is a way to protect against short circuits so that a short circuit in one part of the layout doesn't shut down the entire layout during an operating session. There are a number of products on the market that offer solutions to this kind of a problem. You can buy circuit breakers where a circuit board contains one or more breakers for different power districts or short management districts on your layout, but these circuit breakers can be rather pricey. For years, I've been using 1156 automotive taillight bulbs as ways to manage shorts on the layout and ways that absorb the current caused by a short in order to keep from tripping the circuit breaker on the main unit. I first learned about this kind of short management from Joe Fugate in a forum that we participated in together several years ago. Recently, NCE has come out with a product that does this exact same thing. Here's a photograph of the new NCE product called the CP6. And as you can see, it uses six different light bulbs to give short protection to six different districts on your layout. The drawback to the CP6 is one, the fact that it retails for $34.95, which comes to a little over $5 per bulb or $5 per circuit. The second problem I see with the NCE product is the fact that all of your short protection bulbs are confined to one area, which means you have to run long bus wires from this short protection unit to different areas of your layout. I'm going to show you a way today that you can wire up your own 1156 light bulbs in order to give yourself short protection on your entire layout, and you can do it for less than $2 per short protection district. What you need for this project are some 1156 bulbs, which you can pick up at any automotive parts store. Now, some of you may ask why the 1156 as opposed to some other number, some other type of automotive light bulb. And I can't give you a full detailed reason for that other than to say that the 1156 bulb has the right amount of resistance to work with most DCC systems. You'll need some 18 gauge wire. I always use the same color wire for these bulbs as the wire of the side of the DCC circuit that I wired into. And I always wire mine into the red wire, so I'm using red 18 gauge wire. You'll need a couple of spade terminal connectors. And you'll need a terminal strip, and you may want some jumpers like this one here uh, that can help you connect terminals on your terminal strip together. It's also very handy, I find, to use these vinyl cable clamps to hold the bulbs in place, and you'll need some short screws to hold the clamp in place. I like these short brass cabinet door screws as I happen to have a lot of them around and they're small enough that they don't go all the way through your sub road bed or whatever you're, you're screwing your light bulb into. The way this works is you wire the bulb in series into one side of your DCC circuit. Whenever power flows from your DCC system to the track and to your locomotives, the power required to run your locomotives is fairly low. And so that low amperage will flow through the bulb without causing the bulb to light. However, whenever there's a short circuit on that segment of your layout, the resistance goes up and the current draw goes up. 
And as that current draw rises, it causes the bulb to light. When the bulb lights, the filament gets hot, the resistance goes up, therefore the bulb absorbs the extra amperage and the extra current that's being drawn to that part of the layout, which keeps your locomotives or rolling stock or track from overheating, and it also protects your DCC system from dripping its main breaker. Rather than crawl underneath the layout, we're going to go to the approach track to my lower level staging yard, uh, where I have one of these bulbs wired in. Before we get to today's episode, I want to take a moment to say thank you to those who made the YouTube Model Builders live show possible this month. Enjoyed the opportunity to be on the live show. Thank you, Big Bill, for the invitation. And I want to thank Johnny Reb and Barry for putting on the show this month. Ray Bobell, who was the, the other guest who was on this month, really enjoyed the time together and uh, enjoyed being on the show. And I want to thank all of you who watched the show live and posted your comments and questions. And if you haven't seen the show yet, I hope that you'll take some time to go take a look. It was a good episode. I think you'll enjoy it. And I'll post a link to it at the end of this video as well as uh, down in the description below. So now let me show you how I prepare these bulbs and how I wire them into my layout. So here we are on the approach track to my lower level staging yard. And you see here a terminal strip where my main power bus connects into... Uh, a sub bus that uh, then goes to connect to track feeders. Um, this is how I do the wiring on all of my layout, underneath my layout. And what you'll see here through this terminal strip, uh, you see this red wire here and this black wire here. That is my main power bus. It is uh, 12 gauge wire, stranded wire. And I've connected it into spade terminals. And then the power bus actually connects through the terminal to go straight on out to the uh, the rest of the layout. Same way uh, with the, the, the black wire on the negative side. Um, notice on the negative side there's a jumper right here that connects these two terminals together. That allows the power bus to go straight through this terminal out to the rest of the layout, but it connects over to this terminal to be able to use my sub bus uh, which is a, a, a lighter wire. This is 18 gauge stranded wire. And that goes out and connects to the feeders that actually feed the power to the track. Uh, on the positive side, you'll notice there's no jumper between, between this terminal and, uh, and the terminal where the sub bus connects. That's where our short limiting 1156 bulb comes in. Um, here I have a bulb that I have uh, that I have wired up. I've soldered an 18 gauge wire to the side of this bulb and also one to the terminal on the bottom. Uh, that allows the power to flow through the bulb uh, by soldering the wires on each side. And I've put just spade connectors on the ends of both of those wires. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to connect it to this terminal uh, that is part of the main power bus. It really does not matter which way you connect these, whether you connect uh, the wire that goes to the side of the bulb or to the bottom terminal on the bulb. It really doesn't matter which way the power flows through the bulb, uh, as long as it flows through the bulb. Okay, so that wire is connected to the main power bus, and then so the power is going to come through this wire, through my, through my bulb, and then out through this wire I have in my hand, which I'm going to connect to this terminal on this end. Get my hand out of the way. Um, so now my power will flow from the bus, from the main bus, through the, the bulb here, and then through this wire back into my sub bus, and this goes to my track feeders. And then here is my cable clamp. And literally, I just put a screw into the bottom of that cable clamp, and it kind of serves as a clamp where I can literally just pop the bulb into that, and uh, it holds it in place just perfectly uh, without putting any extra pressure on it. it. Just It just literally kind of snaps in there and holds it into place. And that has my short limiting bulb connected into, into my track in this particular short management district. This track is insulated about three feet in each direction from this point. And so uh, this is specifically limiting any shorts that take place on this section of track in between the two points where it is insulated. 
A secondary advantage to this type of short protection is the fact that whenever you short out the layout in one area, the bulb lights showing you exactly where the short has occurred and when a short has occurred. For example, if I short out my track here with this file, you'll see that the bulb lights up and shows me that this section of the layout is where there is a short. Uh, at the same time, the rest of the layout continues to run, and I don't trip the circuit breaker on the DCC unit itself. I recently read an article about the NCE system that I mentioned in the opening of this video that referred to this process as crude. I assume that what they're referring to is the fact that it is not as high-tech as some of the other electronic breaker systems that are available on the market today. However, I've been using this system for over 15 years, and I have found it to be a great way to manage shorts on the layout, and I've never had any damage to my DCC system or to a locomotive while using this system whenever I had a short circuit. So this may be a system of short management that you want to try on your layout. It definitely has a great cost-saving benefit and can provide you some great protection as well. I want to thank you for watching this episode of Ron's Trains and Things. If you enjoyed it, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up down below. Also, remember to subscribe and click on that little bell icon so you can catch every episode. If you found this video useful, be sure and share it on your social media or model railroad forums that you participate in. Be sure and leave a comment or a question in the comment section down at the bottom of the page. I always love to hear from you, and I always respond to your comments. Finally, check out that expanded description right below this video. There you'll find some more information about my layout, the Texas, Colorado, and Western, and the Facebook page that I keep for my layout, as well as my Amazon Pick of the Week, and ways that you can support Ron's Trains and Things through my Patreon or PayPal Me account. Well, that's all I have for today, but be sure and join me on Friday, as I'll be bringing you another Feature Friday segment featuring a model railroad museum from Hannibal, Missouri, that I was supposed to bring you last week, and you'll see this week. I know you'll enjoy it, so I hope that you'll join me Friday to see that, and I look forward to seeing you then. Today we're going to be talking about short management. Oh, you got to be faster than that. Today we're going to be talking about short management. Oh, listen, I want them to just hit me and so I can catch them. I don't want them to go past me. I don't want you to try to kill me with them. Today we're going to be talking about short management. Way too slow. When I say short, throw it. Okay. Take four. It's hard to find good help these days.